Hello, my name is Ariel Beatty, and I'm an attorney from Colorado Legal Services. I'm here today to talk to you about how a permanent protection order hearing proceeds. Once your temporary protection order has been granted, you will be given a follow-up court date to attend. If the other party has been served, your hearing will proceed one of three different ways. As a side note, if there has not been service by the time you go back to court, you should ask the judge for additional time for service. First, if you do not appear at your court date, the court will dismiss the protection order without prejudice. Without prejudice means you can file the protection order again at any time. Second, if you appear and the other party does not appear, you may request the entry of a permanent protection order on a default basis. In this situation, the court will grant your request for a permanent protection order without an evidentiary hearing, so you don't have to sit up and tell your side of the story to the judge. Third, both you and the other party may appear in court. When the magistrate calls your case, you should go to the appropriate tables at the front of the courtroom. You are the plaintiff or the petitioner. The other party is the defendant, sometimes called the respondent. The magistrate will ask you what you would like to do. You should request the entry of a permanent protection order. The other party may agree with the entry of a permanent protection order without an admission of guilt, or they may object to the entry of a permanent protection order. If the other party objects, either of you may request a good cause continuance in order to gather evidence, look for an attorney, or otherwise prepare your case. You can also proceed to a hearing on the same day. The hearing is where the magistrate or judge will let each party testify and present evidence. Both parties can testify and call witnesses. Each party is typically only allowed a short time to present their case. You should always speak to the magistrate or judge, not the other party. I recommend not even looking at the other party during the hearing or while you are speaking. You are telling your story to the judge, not to anyone else in the courtroom. Be careful not to talk over the magistrate or the other party. If you are able, you should stand up when you are speaking to the magistrate or judge. When you address the magistrate or judge, you should call them your honor. The petitioner, or the person who filed the complaint, is the party who will testify first or call the first witness. It is your decision if you would like to call a witness or if you would like to testify first. Just remember that you should save enough time to tell the judge your story as well. You should reread your complaint and decide how you wish to tell the judge about your case. For example, you may wish to tell about the events of your case in chronological order or go in the order of the events as they are listed in your complaint. Since the court has never met you or the other party or heard your story before, you should provide some background and contextual information. However, be careful. Consider what the court needs to know versus extra details that can be left out. Because there is never a good reason for physical violence or hurting someone else, you don't need to explain why the other side was mad. Just explain what happened. If you wish for a witness to appear by telephone, you must ask the court before the hearing if that is allowed, not on the same day as the hearing. You may ask the judge about a telephonic appearance while asking for a continuance. If possible, you should file a written motion to do so. Blank motion forms are also available online. State why a witness needs to appear by phone and their contact information. Direct examination is when a party is testifying for the first time. You may speak and the magistrate may ask you questions. You can ask questions of your witness as well. Direct examination questions are usually open-ended. For example, you might ask a witness, where were you on March 12th? Stick to questions based on a who, what, when, where, and why format. Cross-examination is when the other party questions you or your witness after direct examinations. Questions on cross-examination are usually leading questions. This means they are structured to be a yes or a no question. For example, you testified on direct examination that you were with the petitioner on March 12th? Answer these questions in a straightforward way. You may be allowed to present a brief redirect examination after cross-examination. This is an opportunity to clarify or explain items discussed during cross-examination. For example, yes, I was with the petitioner on March 12th, but at that, not at the time I was asked about on cross-examination. A permanent protection order is granted based on a finding that the acts alleged in the complaint are more likely than not to be true, and that the acts or threats may be likely to continue without an order restricting the other party.
please see our video and evidence for more details on that topic. At the end of the hearing, the judge or magistrate will make a ruling on the case. The case will either be dismissed with prejudice, meaning the complaint with the exact same facts cannot be brought again, or the permanent protection order will be granted. In most cases, the Brady Bill will apply because there has been an intimate relationship. The judge may ask if you and the other party were in an intimate relationship. This does not necessarily mean physical intimacy, but whether the parties have ever uh, dated, lived together, had some kind of romantic entanglement. This bill prohibits the restrained party from possessing or owning firearms. The restrained party must testify under oath as to whether they have firearms and must file an affidavit if they surrender those firearms.